Thus far in our basic business statistics course, we've spent a lot of time talking about the mean, the standard deviation around the mean, the sampling error of the mean, the distribution of sample means. All of these concepts are important and foundational to any statistics course. However, there is another quality of populations that we haven't spent nearly enough time discussing, and that is proportions. Let's consider that the university is our population. We will have within our university population a certain proportion of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. For any given class, however, which would function as our sample, we might have a different proportion of those class rankings. In an introductory statistics course, we might have more freshmen and sophomores. In an upper level statistics course, we might have more juniors and seniors. Therefore, we could compare the proportions of our sample to the population proportions. In fact, we could even use a hypothesis test to examine whether a sample deviates from its population value. However, what we want to focus on for right now is what if you chose a random sample from the university population? Your random sample should have very similar proportions to the population proportion. Remembering that every sample will always deviate from its population value to some degree if you go out to enough decimal places. In this statistics course, I want to be sure that I do not neglect a discussion of proportions. In fact, I have encouraged other statistics instructors to always talk about proportions as part of your class. I push that. In fact, when we talk about neglected statistical concepts, you'll often find me pushing P. And I think that you too can become friends with this concept of proportions because any friend of P is a friend of me. Let's then discuss the proportions in terms of the sampling distribution of the proportion. As we have done with means, we can also use sample proportions as a point estimator for population parameters. We start with a population of infinite size and an unknown proportion value. And from that population, we draw a random sample of a given size. We determine from our random sample that the proportion in that sample is 0.65. We can then use the sample proportion as a point estimator for the population. We can infer population parameters from sample statistics. The proportion of the sample is the best estimator of the proportion in the population. And as we did with means, if we drew multiple samples and measured the proportion of each, not every proportion would be the same. We could create a number line, stack up our proportions on that number line being represented by little wooden blocks, and we would discover that there is also a sampling distribution of P. The probability distribution of all possible values of the sample proportion P. And it won't come as any surprise to learn that when we have a sampling distribution of P, we will also have a variance value of P, the standard error of the proportion. Now here's some other good news about the sampling distribution of a proportion. Unlike when we were calculating means, in which we had to take into careful consideration the size of the sample, when we're using proportions, we really want to ensure that the sample is large enough. If our sample is large enough, we can use a normal distribution to estimate it. So how large is large enough? With a large enough sample size, the distribution of P can be approximated by a normal distribution as long as the sample size times the proportion is greater than or equal to five, and the sample size times one minus the population proportion is greater than or equal to five. Did you know that you can get a mean 
of proportions. The average proportion, which is P bar, is the estimator for the population proportion. It is the value that we would expect to get in any given sample. The expected value of the proportion in a sampling distribution of the proportion is the population proportion. However, the standard error around the proportion will be calculated depending on whether we're using an infinite or a finite sample. If the sample size is large enough and we can estimate using a normal distribution, given the parameters that I explained just a moment ago, then the standard error of the proportion is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. If the population is finite, if it is not large enough to estimate using a normal distribution, then the math is a little more complex. The standard error of the proportion for a finite population involves multiplying the infinite population formula by the square root of the population size minus the sample size divided by population size minus one. This is called the finite population correction factor. Let's apply what we've learned using our ICU, intensive care unit, sample. This is an infinite population of patients who have been admitted to the ICU. It's infinite because it's continually changing. The people in an ICU today may not be there tomorrow, probably not going to be there next week, and there will certainly be more people entering the ICU. Any time you sample, you are sampling a population that is continually changing. The variable that we are going to be using for our proportion is the variable expired. It is referring to the number of patients who pass away while they are in the ICU. We will calculate the estimated value and the standard error of the proportion for various sample sizes, each time checking to make sure that our sample size is large enough. We will calculate with a sample of 30 patients, 50 patients, and 100 patients. And because this is a learning experiment, we will have access to the true population values, something that wouldn't happen in the real world, but will allow us to make comparisons between our estimates and the values that we are estimating, giving us a very clear picture of how much error are in our estimates. To do this example, we are going to turn to Microsoft Excel which is what we're going to do in our next video.